something I like to leave people with about how easily people can be misled. The cold fusion scandal, or whatever you want to call it, suppression. In 19, let's see, it was 2009, 20 years after it was suppressed, it was determined that it was real, it was true, valid. It was, this is something as big as the Wright brothers. That's true. But it was suppressed very easily. And I'm going to show you what happened then to realize how easily we can be misled through peer pressure. This is Stephen Jones in 1989. Science by Pressure. Is it a shortcut to fusion energy? I don't want to disappoint anyone. I think I'll put my read my lips answer here. And then, uh, and then I'll carry on. That, I think that'll become clear why I'm saying that. Can you read my lips on that back in the back? It says, it says no. Energy is a long way off. That's why I say no. This is our result. Uh, it's just way off. It's, I mean, it's, a, I think, a door that's open to us, but really a door on, on physics more than on energy. Geophysics in particular could be an interesting uh, area. Now, yeah, let's forget about that. But then what he does is takes a vote. A vote to destroy the careers of Pons and Fleischmann and to vote against looking into, into what they had discovered. It's way off. Holds his hand up. And then after that, we get uh, Steve Coonan holds his hand up. And these other physicists are looking, and they're trying to um, decide, you know, then they, this, is, this all will go quickly, but we're showing, you know, as it, as it progresses. You know, Steve Coonan, just a few years ago, was appointed by Obama to, be, to work for the Energy Department, undersecretary. This guy raising his pen. This guy's getting ready to raise his hand. He thinks he's ready to go. And that last one knows he has, he looks down, kind of in shame. He's okay, but this all happens very quickly. The peer pressure involved here. This is at a press conference. Let's vote to throw uh, free energy down the down the drain. I don't think these guys realized what they were doing when they did it. And they were just forced into this. Opportunism. Jones insisted on going public quickly with his comparison. Opportunism. Jones insisted on going public quickly with his comparison. Opportunism. Jones insisted on going public quickly with his comparison. Opportunism. Jones insisted on going public quickly. The buildings turned to dust. Hey, let's take a vote on that. But this is voting on what we see. Did the buildings turn to dust in midair? Well, first of all, the tower's gone. We agree with that. The towers are gone. Did they turn to dust? Does the technology exist that can turn a building into dust in midair? If we started out looking at what's available and backtracking, we would never figure this out. There's evidence that such a t technology does exist because what happened has to be possible, because it happened. There's a fellow who wrote this, who uh, wrote this song.
all the data says that some form of directed electromagnetic energy was used um, to basically break down the materials of the World Trade Center. And the connections that Jones has between um, the cold fusion experience that everybody can read about in, in Dr. Malov's book and with what's going on right now with the 9-11 situation, it's, it's just a mirror image of, of him muddling up and then, you know, trying to get public opinion against, you know, who, whoever his target is. In this case, um, it's, it's Dr. Judy Wood. And in the previous case, it was Pons and Fleischmann. Played that so many times that don't forget it. People voted down free energy. It was there. But how do we fall into that? It isn't just these people, but there will be others. People just follow along, follow the herd. Group think. Resist group think. If we retain our own, like, I don't want anybody to believe in me. I want to give you the evidence for you to sort out, empower you to think for yourself because that is our only way out of this. How we got here was groupthink. Everyone following the leader. We've given our thinking over to someone else's keeping. We need to take it back. Each one of us need to think. Otherwise, we're just nothing but trained lab rats. To put it bluntly, it's just, you know, here's the cheese, run to the cheese. Do the same thing every day, you know, nine to five or whatever the case is but to retain our humanity, our individuality. Use it or lose it. So, let's not let history repeat. We have a choice. And that choice is ours. And that choice is real. Because all of the attacking on me and so forth and all of the weird muddle-ups, that wouldn't be going on if we didn't have a chance. Because if they didn't do that, we might actually get somewhere. So let's think our ways out of it. But the most important thing, empirical evidence is the truth that theory must mimic. Let's go without theory. Theories are assumptions, and it, there's two meanings of theory. Theory is like, you know, guesswork kind of, or theory of, like if you make a theoretical model, it's being able to, to um, predict something. And it's not applies to a specific thing, like uh, theory of gravity, so you can use it over and over again. It doesn't apply to uh, investigating a particular occasion. You start with empirical evidence. Look at what the evidence shows. Because, you know, just think of a magic show. A magic show, they're doing something here while they're getting you to look over here. You're making assumptions about things. You fool yourself. They talk into fooling yourself. So the minimizing the number of assumptions you make, and that takes an awful lot of rigor sometimes. But in the future, I think the decision or the the uh, choice in figuring out what the truth is is going to be getting more and more difficult. And I end up on that. I think that's it. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for caring. Oops. I'll leave it with that.